Hey everyone, welcome to the Fuel the Fight podcast. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Nick Behrens, your host, and it's another wonderful day here in the studio. We have a very special guest, Teresa Murray is joining us, the director from the Masters of Social Work. Teresa, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Nick. It's really exciting uh, to be here, and it's always a good day to be able to get the word out about Army Social Work. Yeah, yeah. You know, before we get into social work, I want to talk about you. Okay. I, I want okay. to talk about uh, Teresa Murray and, and kind of your Army story and, and what brought you in and why you serve. Yeah, absolutely. So my Army story started about 24 years ago when I graduated from high school. Um, I went right into West Point. So I uh, kind of knew that I was interested in a life of service. I had some military background in my family. My brother had gone to the Naval Academy. And so that got me looking into the service academies as an opportunity for education, but also for service to our country. So I went to West Point, graduated, was commissioned as a Medical Service Corps officer. So I spent time doing platoon leader, um, company command, battalion staff jobs, uh, general's aid, th those sort of kind of Medical Service Corps positions. And then when I was deployed to Iraq in 2007, that's when I found out about this opportunity for social work. And so uh, I applied to the inaugural class, the very first class of the Army Master of Social Work program uh, back then and graduated 2009 actually. <clears throat> and so then I went on to uh, pursue my, my internship. So did that at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And then I was able to follow on there with my first position as a behavioral health officer with 2nd Brigade of the 101st. Um, during my time there, uh, you know, I, I really got into the trenches in terms of being able to spend time with soldiers on a one-on-one, -on -one doing clinical social work, uh, advising commanders, and um, you know, that's where I really found that I, I really enjoy doing this in uniform. Uh, while I was with 2nd Brigade, deployed to Afghanistan, so I got to also do my social work job in a deployed setting, which of course is very different. Uh, following that deployment, I got my first taste of clinic leadership uh, there at Fort Gordon, Georgia, where I spent a couple years. Um, while I was there, I had uh, some other opportunities to put my hand and my stamp on new programs like our intensive outpatient program that we stood up while I was there. Uh, I also got to lead our community behavioral health service, which was our AIT clinic. Uh, while I was at Fort Gordon, I was mentored by a, a senior officer who really encouraged me to consider going and getting my PhD. And uh, you know that just proved to be one of those things that the Army is so good about, right? Which oh, yeah. is providing additional opportunities, kind of dangling something that is just a great thing for me and my family. So I uh, applied to that program. I ended up going to Catholic University where uh, in three years I got my PhD and uh, it was a tough time, oh, yeah. uh, pretty intense <laughs> time frame to get that done in. But at the same time it was nice because I was able to be home with my kids in the evening and um, it was a little bit of a different schedule for a few years. Following that, uh, I got picked up to be faculty uh, and the executive officer here at our Master of Social Work program. Uh, so I did that for the first two years here at Fort Sam Houston. And then most recently in July, I took over as the program director. So that's really neat because I feel like I've kind of come full circle from being in that first Master of Social Work class to now being in charge of the program. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and here I am 20 years after commissioning uh, you know, really enjoying being an Army social worker. I also currently serve as one of our deputy consultants to the Surgeon General. So I'm able to work for our consultant, uh, helping to make decisions about our AOC, our area of concentration, 73 Alpha, and uh, helping to manage, mentor, and guide um, our, our whole social workforce in the Army. So that's been really exciting. No, that, it's so awesome. And the fact that you have that perspective of having you know, you know, done the, the soldier things mm -hmm. before, not that, you know, still soldier <clears throat> social work, but understanding yeah. what, what that, the pressure of command and all those things look like when you're, when you may be working with those, those folks. Um, are all social workers, are they prior service or is there a... No, not necessarily. So we have three ways that people mm -hmm. can enter the Army as a social worker. Uh, one, they can come through our Master of Social Work program, and that is open to civilians, those who are currently serving as an enlisted person, or those who are already officers. Um, we also have, for those individuals who already have a Master of Social Work, they're able to come in just into our internship. So again, same uh, groups that are eligible for that. 
And then we finally, for our third route, we have our fully qualified option. So that's for individuals who have already gotten their Master of Social Work, they've gotten that post-master's experience, and are now independently licensed as a clinical social worker. And so they can come in and go right into one of those, uh, those units that need their skills and their knowledge so desperately. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I mean, if th that's great that you get those three options. So if you're coming out of school and you want to be a social worker, you got a solution. Absolutely. If you've already done the school, but you just need your internship, you got a solution. And if you're already a social worker, yep, you got a solution. Absolutely. We, we will take them all of those ways. And we really, we really need these great quality social workers who, who want to serve their country. No, I, I love it. Can you give a quick overview of the program you're over? Yeah, so the Army Master of Social Work program, uh, we are currently affiliated with the University of Kentucky, so that means all of our faculty uh, have faculty appointments through UK, uh, and also that means all of our students graduate as Wildcats with uh, University of Kentucky uh, diplomas. It is a very accelerated program, 14 months in length, where students will complete 60 credit hours uh, toward that Master of Social Work, as well as over 1,000 hours of field practicum experience out in the community here in San Antonio where they really start to uh, apply those concepts, those ideas, those theories that they're learning about in class into real world situations with actual clients. Uh, so that is a 14 month program. Following graduation from our 14 month program here in San Antonio, these uh, graduates will then go to a two year internship and so that's what we call the social work internship program which is 26 months long, and that takes place at one of 13 different military treatment facilities across the United States. Uh, there, the uh, graduates will go through uh, different rotations of various clinics where social workers work, and uh, they get that really critical, uh, crucial experience and, and clinical knowledge uh, under a supervised setting, all working toward their independent licensure. So the goal after the end of that internship is that they will have their um, uh, individual, uh, excuse me, independent clinical license and can then, you know, be able to practice on their own with uh, one of our military units. So straight out of the internship, they're kind of expected to operate like right after that or do they you normally match up with a more senior social worker? Or? Yeah, so most of the uh, the interns after they complete, uh, then they won't be interns anymore, but th what they'll do is usually they'll go to a like a brigade combat team and uh, they'll be serving as a behavioral health officer. And usually there are two individuals that are BHOs within those units. And so um, hopefully they're gonna be paired up with someone that's a little bit more senior. They will also often be working as part of an embedded behavioral health team where they will have other clinicians, social workers, psychologists, psychiatrists that are all serving that same brigade that they can uh, you know, consult with, they can talk to, uh, they can uh, you know, kind of, help with decision making so they're not fully out there on their own. Yeah. Nice. So they kind of have that support around. Them. Absolutely. It, what does a typical day for kind of a social worker look like? Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's think about uh, one of our social workers who is out as a behavioral health officer mm -hmm. with the brigade because that's really what most of our social workers are doing at any given time. Uh, so that is really going to be a balance between clinical time and time with the unit. So about 50% of their time, 50% of their day should be in the clinic seeing clients, doing therapy, doing assessments, uh, doing fitness for duty evaluations, uh, th those sorts of things. And then the other half of the time could be attending um, high risk meetings, they could be consulting commanders on, on various uh, soldier issues, they might be giving classes like uh, unit education kind of classes on behavioral health topics, or they might be doing some of their own training, like going out to the range to fire their assigned weapon or going out to the field. Nice. So, mm -hmm. so kind of that 50-50 mix of, you know, doing the typical maybe a social worker on the outside, but then you also have that soldiering task and, yep. and things added to it. Absolutely. Um, you know, what, what's the most challenging thing about being a social worker, would, would you say, from your yeah. experience? Well, probably the most challenging things are a few that I would think of. Um, one is that, you know, it is a demanding job. It, it is an emotionally uh, taxing job. Uh, and so finding that work-life balance is really important. It's important that social workers find ways to conduct self-care so that they can ensure that they're not trying to pour out from an empty cup, mm. right? And so really uh, taking care of ourselves, making sure we're fitting in that PT time, 
making sure that we're uh, you know eating well, sleeping well, those sorts of things, so that we can really focus on on helping our clients then during the day. Uh, so achieving and, and trying to strive for as much as we can that work-life balance is probably one of the biggest challenges. The other one would be uh, just that there's no shortage of work for us, as you know. Um, you know, mental health issues are um, you, you know something that that. I don't want to say are prevalent, but but do happen across the military. It's a very stressful job that we do in the military. And so just knowing that uh, there are often aren't enough of us, and so that's why we really need good quality candidates coming to these programs uh, so that, you know, we can continue to fill our behavioral health ranks and be, you know, able to support our warfighter uh, in, in all ways that they need to be well, including mental, mental wellness. Yeah, very yeah. important. And I love how you mentioned nutrition in there as part of that, you know. That's and, right. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's the best thing about being a social worker? Oh, man. So I think the best thing for me uh, is, is really just any time that it seems like I have somehow helped a service member or one of their family members in some way. Uh, it, it's interesting how that can happen. Sometimes it's you, you just don't know the impact. You don't recognize the impact all the time of, of what you say. And so when it's some little thing that you had a hand in, in in helping someone get better or to reach their goals, that's probably the most rewarding thing. The other thing that I'm currently really enjoying about being an Army social worker in the position that I'm in is being able to mentor and shape our junior social work officers. Uh, it, it's really neat to be able to uh, kind of help guide, help advise, uh, you know, just help tell them about my story so that that can help them make some decisions about their own Army journey. No, that's that's awesome, and I'm I'm with you there as far as you know teaching here at, at the mm -hmm. Medical Center of Excellence is awesome because you I I'm sure you're the same way like I remember all my instructors Absolutely. like like throughout your career mm -hmm. you always remember that first exposure and to be that that first exposure um, is is pretty awesome. Yeah. If you had a crystal ball, what does the the future for social work look like? Like let's say over the next twenty years. Yeah. Is there yeah, so, I mean, the thing I would say about Army Social Work is we are only getting bigger. Uh, we are growing. Uh, we have been asked to increase the number of people we're bringing on over the next several years. Uh, one, because there there is a recognition that there aren't enough of us and that we just need more uh, in order to meet the behavioral health demand for our, our soldiers and for their family members. So I think what I see is, is growth. Um, social workers over the last several years, especially over the last 10 years plus that I've been doing it, have been able to get a lot of additional um, things that we've been credentialed to do in the military. And so that's really exciting because I see us continuing to be a really big player in Army behavioral health and really across the whole Defense Health Agency. You know, social workers are the largest uh, profession that is providing behavioral health care when we look across the nation. Oh, wow. And so that's only going to continue to to grow for our Army social workers. Is there any, I know, you know, being here at the, the schoolhouse and, and getting your doctorate, you're into research, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Uh, what, what about in, in, inciting research uh, involving your field that you're, you're tracking? Maybe more people should know about or people don't know about. You right. Know? Yeah. Man, so I recently went to the Military Health System Research Symposium uh, in Orlando where I was able to do a presentation. And it was just so encouraging to hear about the vast uh, research that's happening in all areas of Army medicine and DOD medicine, not, not just social work. Uh, but, but social work has a lot going on in terms of um, research on evidence-based practices, especially like PTSD, making sure that we've got the best treatments available to treat PTSD among our service members and their families. Uh, but then we have a lot of you know, other niche areas of research, things like moral injury, um, things like the impact of the work that we do on social workers, right, on, on ourselves. Uh, we also have things, research that looks at uh, ways to improve readiness, such as increasing our health literacy among our service members. And so those are just a few items that I know of uh, that are happening right now. But, uh, but we definitely you know, need more research in social work. And so I would encourage anyone who is kind of following in my footsteps to seek out those opportunities to get that PhD and, and to continue uh, broadening the scope of military social work research because there's definitely a need. Yeah, so for opportunities to, for social workers to get mm -hmm. their PhD, how, yep. how does that work? How did you 
go about that? Is yeah. Yeah. So it, every year uh, there is an, an announcement that goes out. Uh, and so there are uh, two individuals selected from each year, uh, two active duty social workers that essentially get the opportunity to uh, make their full-time job for three years to go to a civilian institution to get their PhD. Now there are some stipulations like tuition caps and um, again the program has to be supportive of you finishing in those three years uh, but otherwise the rest is paid for and so it is such an awesome opportunity. Uh, there's a lot of universities out there that, that want military social workers at their institutions and they recognize the experience and the leadership uh, and the, the, just the depth of knowledge that we bring to the table. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of different places folks can go. Sometimes that's a, a great time to kind of get near family if, if geographically that can work for somebody. Um, but, but yeah, so that, that's how that works. Now, in addition to the PhD program, we also have a fellowship that, that social, social workers can pursue. And so that's specifically a child and family fellowship. So for those that are interested in working with kids, adolescents, families, uh, on behavioral health needs, that's offered at Walter Reed, so in Beth at Bethesda, Maryland. And it's a two-year program. Now, of course, these... Uh, educational programs come with an obligation, yeah. right? I have a five-year obligation to serve after my PhD. Uh, those that are doing the, the fellowship, I think, have a three-year obligation after that. Uh, and then we also have social workers who are going through our Baylor program here, the MHA MBA uh, program. So each year for the last several years, we've had at least one or two social workers in each class. So multiple opportunities for social workers to get education, whether it's specific to social work or even broadening, uh, like getting an MBA MHA. No, so. and, and that is awesome, and, and mm -hmm. I don't think that story is told enough, so yep. I'm glad I wanted to hit on that for, uh -huh. for all, all the medical specialties, right? Absolutely. There's so many opportunities for free education yes. in the military that if you take advantage of it, um, you know, it, it really uh, sets your, you up for success throughout your military career, but then after your military career, yep. um, I'm sure there's not going to be, you know, any problem finding employment. Right. Know. Well, and that's one reason I pursued the PhD was I figured once I take this uniform off and all of us will take this yes. off at some time, right, that that gives me additional options and opportunities for post-retirement employment. So um, I, I think that's a, a, a great thing to highlight. Uh, and like you said, debt free. I mean, yeah. I have, <laughs> thanks to the military, I've gotten a bachelor's degree, two master's degree and a PhD with no student loans. And so it really is you can't beat that deal. No, you, really you can't, can't beat that deal. And especially when then you get the pleasure and opportunity to continue to serve in this organization where, you know, you and I have a long history. I've known you for many years yeah. where, you know, it's the people that really keep you going, knowing that you've got great, you know, experts on, on either side of you that, that you want to continue working with. Yes. No. Um, so true, and, and yeah, the, the people, the family environment, we, yep. we could go on for days about that. Absolutely. Um, uh, but the education is also pretty awesome. Yep. Folks who are listening to this or, mm -hmm. or watching on YouTube who are interested in your program, what can they be doing now to prepare? Like, like what's your yeah. advice? Yeah, so in, prep, in preparation for the Master of Social Work program, mm -hmm. I would encourage someone, especially if they're still in their bachelor's mm -hmm. program, their undergraduate education, be trying to get as high of a GPA as possible. Okay, our minimum requirement just to go before the board is 3.25. Right. Uh, but of course, the higher the better, yeah. just to make you more competitive for that. Uh, we also have a GRE requirement. So uh, folks need to get a 290 or above on the GRE. So be studying, be preparing for that examination. And if you haven't quite gotten there, you know, get that prep course in and take it again. You know, be persistent. We've had several people who didn't get that on that first try but we're able to in subsequent attempts. Uh, the other thing I would encourage folks to do is look for ways to serve. Social work is all about service, whether that's in uniform or not, and really focusing on those populations who have been marginalized or oppressed historically, uh, folks who are impoverished, who need additional assistance. And so there are a lot of ways people can get involved in volunteer work, um, you know, it just different opportunities within their communities to serve within those types of agencies. So that's going to set you apart. It's, it demonstrates an interest in being a social worker, whether that's in uniform or not. 
Uh, and also there's a lot of ways to do that with our military populations. You know, a lot of organizations are serving veterans, a lot of organizations are serving our military families. And so uh, anything you can do in that way is going to set yourself apart. Finally, uh, of course, because uh, our master's program is very heavy in writing, any, uh, anything you can be doing to improve your writing skills is going to be helpful once you get into the program uh, because it's a quick turnaround, it's very accelerated. If you can work on your writing and get it to a place where uh, it, it needs to be, it's going to be that much easier to get through successfully. Nice. So work on the GPA, yep. take the GRE prep courses, mm -hmm. you know, whatever yep. you have yep. to do, work on the writing and then find, you know, some a social worker to mentor you yeah, or a place to volunteer mm -hmm. or to get that exposure. Yep. Um, where can people find more information about your program? Yeah. So uh, it's really easy to just Google Army University of Kentucky Master of Social Work Program. There is a UK website that has a lot of information for applicants. Now, uh, another good resource to talk to about our program is going to be a recruiter. Specifically, an Army healthcare recruiter is going to be able to inform individuals about those eligibility requirements, about the application process. And in fact, the application process goes through the recruiters. So it's going to be crucial that someone who is interested gets connected uh, w with a recruiter. And that's going to be for all three of those ways, those pathways for someone to come in as a social worker, whether it's MSW, whether it's the internship program, or someone who's fully qualified, already licensed. Uh, then finally, for those who have access, who might be already wearing the uniform, there's an annual MILPER message that comes out every year. Uh, so the one for the MSW program comes out every July, July, and that's in preparation for a January board, is usually how the timeline works. And then um, for the internship, the, uh, app excuse me, the MILPER message comes out in December in preparation for a June board. Okay. And those who are currently in their bachelor's degree programs, even though they haven't quite finished, they can start that application process for the recruiters uh, for the MSW program. And then those who haven't quite completed their MSW, they're in that last semester, they can already be working with recruiters for the internship. Okay, so they don't have to wait until those degrees are completed. They just have to have a letter from their registrar and that sort of thing from their university that indicates they're on track to graduate. Gotcha. So start early. Yeah. That's, that, that's the advice. Start early. And uh, I'll put all that information. I'll get the website. We'll drop yep. it in the show notes. Great. So you can just click and, um, you know, follow that. Uh, wow. No, we, we've covered quite a bit. Uh, any any closing thoughts or any other things you'd like to, to share with the audience? Yeah. I mean, I would just share that Army social work is such a diverse field. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the opportunity as a behavioral health officer. But there are other things like if you're interested in policy, if you're interested in leadership, if you're interested in being a commander, um, if you want to teach like I am, you know, there are a wide variety of, of things that you can do as an Army social worker. So, um, you know, I, I just, it's been a very rewarding career for me up to this point. Um, I, if anyone wants to reach out, uh, I, I would be happy to answer questions about my Army career and my social work path or to connect people with those who might have kind of some specific or niche areas of interest. Uh, but I encourage folks who are interested to, to really look into these programs. We have great opportunities, especially those educational opportunities. And, um, you know, if you are someone who wants to serve, which we know social workers are, or those who are interested in, in uh, being a social worker, and what better way to do that than to serve America's, you know, sons and daughters uh, here in uniform. So. Yes, agreed. And I'll put the all that information in. We'll we can put your contact if they yep. want to click on. Perfect. So you can reach out and talk to Teresa. Um, Teresa, thanks so much for coming. It's, it's always great to spend time with you. Even though I work with you over there, it's always great to see you and uh, have you on the show. Absolutely. Thank you, Nick. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for the invitation. All right. That's this episode of Fuel the Fight podcast. Wherever you listen to your podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, so we can keep doing this. So we know, you know, we're giving you the content that you want. Until next time, we are signing off.